Today we're going to talk about the Electron workflow trap. And I know Electron fanboys are about to come out the woodworks as if I hadn't owned every single Electron device ever made, except the SID station. I'm talking about even a mono machine, as if I hadn't jammed with Chank and S from Electron. And if you don't know who those people are, then I don't want to hear nothing about it. So I've used Electron quite a bit. I've written a few albums on Electron devices, okay? So I kind of know a little bit what I'm talking about. And if you can't appreciate criticism on something that you bought, then I don't know what to tell you because I'm a paying customer and when things upset me, I like to voice my opinion because I'm a paying customer, okay? So <laughs> if you're fine with like putting up with things, that's on you. The Electron workflow is amazing. We all know this. The conditional tricks, the sequencer, the sounds, okay. Analog rhythm, analog keys, diggy tone, diggy tact, mono machine, machine drum, sit station. I know them by heart, guys. Come on. How much can I hate Electron? <laughs> we have the analog heat, which is like $800 or distortion. We have the analog heat plus coming. That is some effects. So what is the trap? What are you talking about, Jade? Okay, so you have the analog rhythm. Let's say you get an analog rhythm. I think they're like $18.99 now, almost $2,000 for an analog drum machine. And I do know that there is a difference between analog and digital, okay? But you can get a $100 analog drum machine. So when it comes to analog prices, like, that's not it. So what are we really paying for? Definitely the premium device, definitely the workflow. Cause you can get an MK1 rhythm for like 700 bucks on reverb. So what are we paying $1,800 for? We're paying for the ability to sample. That's the difference between the MK2 and the MK1 and for a nicer layout. So you get home after you spend almost two grand on your amazing analog rhythm. You can sample into it. You do some melodic stuff, you know, you're like, wow, I can do a lot with this, but then voices start getting stolen, right? You got to share this voice with this voice, this voice with this voice. At the end, you're like, okay, you know, I guess I need the music one, right? I have the drum one, now I need the melodic one. So, okay, I guess I need an analog keys. All right, eh, another $1,700, that's fine. All right, almost four grand, we have a drum machine and a four voice analog synthesizer that can be split into four different tracks. So we really have four mono synths, okay? I think for its time, it was great. <laughs> like when I got into this about eight years ago, like this was a great deal, okay? Because it was a lot cheaper too. Like they were like $1,200 new. So let's keep going with our scenario. You got your analog rhythm, you got your analog four, okay? But you're missing something. Like, yes, the rhythm can sample, but you know, you see that slider on the octa track. You're like, man, that looks so cool. I could just run all my instruments into the octa track. Well, let's just get an octa track. You know, I'm loving Electron. I love Electron, man. I just cannot have, I'm an Electron fan girl. I just have to have it all. That's what happens with Electron people, guys. So in a short time, you got this new user that doesn't really know much about anything music-wise, okay? That has had a lot of ease making music because it's very easy to make music on Electron machines. You just set your steps and pick another sound and set your steps. And it's a lot easier than something like playing melodies like on an actual keyboard. And I'm not trying to like downplay anyone that uses Electron gear. I've used Electron gear. Electron gear is amazing. I've made amazing music on Electron gear. Music that I would not be able to recreate on any other device because these devices are special. But here is the trap. You got your drums. You got your keys. You got your sequencer. You got your FM drum. You got your other sampler. There is no one device that stands on its own. And here's where people are gonna be like, but Jade, Jade! You can make drums on the Digitone. You can make FM drums. Oh, you can do drums on the Analog 4. Like, you can split a track and put your kick here and put your snare here. I don't wanna do that. No, I want Electron to make a full-blown machine that I don't need like, I don't feel like something is lacking. So like with the rhythm, something is lacking. With the analog four, drums are lacking. So it's like, I need extra. They handicapped their machines on purpose. So you have to buy the partner to it. And that's my gripe with Electron. Like, I just want to see a device like this one that I was talking about yesterday. Something like this, but from Electron with the Electron workflow, with polyphony, with a separate track for drums. Like, if this is a groove box, I don't want to have to work trying to make drums like from scratch every single time and picking a track and maybe fitting a drum hit in between this track because I have a melody right here in this step and you know, like I'm running out of voices. Like, no, no, for this amount of money, I want a full-fledged drum machine. I want four voices. I want them polyphonic. And if you guys are, you know, crazy about the analog four sounds, hey, that's cool. But I prefer the diggy tone sound, so you know, for each their own. And the Digitone has a lot more polyphony. So, you know, when it comes to the analog versus digital debate, in my opinion, like personally, you know, hey, you might be an analog purist, that's on you. When I use my analog rhythm, I barely, like I use my kick, 
sometimes my snare, like I have my sample snare that I've been using for the past five years that I love. And the hats were really good too. But that said, like, are you really gonna be using toms like that? No. What ends up happening with those voices is you sample onto them and then you lose them. Yes, you can layer them, but it's still a drum machine. You can do a lot of melodic stuff with it, but you're still gonna feel lacking. I've done a whole set on the analog rhythm. And here's another thing about the electron workflow that kind of grinds my gears. The file management system and the kits, like yes, they have worked a little better with the transfer app, but that's still something that like could be better. Um, the loading of samples, sharing them between projects and stuff like that, I felt like I would always be losing work. And I know that that has a lot to do with user error, but that's always how I felt. Like I would work on a kit over here with this song, then I would switch onto another pattern, do something else, and then I would go back and it would be messed up. And I'm like, no! So that's the Electron workflow trap. Not being able to just be content with one device, making the devices like lacking, so you need to buy another device. Because if they put a full blown drum machine in the Analog 4, all you would need is the Analog 4. I think the rhythm is actually ahead of the 4 because it has a synth engine, so you could do drums and one or two synths. Again, that's still like a mono synth, so it's still very limited. The DigiTact, monophonic sampling, and no synth engine, so you know, like. If you have a DigiTac, you're probably gonna want a DigiTone. Just, it's a lot of like marketing and psychology that goes into making sure that people get the whole electron experience. And what ends up happening is yes, people will get everything and then they're like, oh my God, I have like five things I need to make music on and I have no idea where to start because I never learned any of them because I got them back to back. And that's what ends up happening. So don't let that be you. This is my advice if you're gonna get any electron gear. Get one piece of electron gear learn it inside out, like learn to do the drums on it, like even if it's a hassle, learn to do everything on it, see how much juice you can get out of it, and then see like what other piece of gear you can add. Because even when it comes to practicality, like my TR-8 is a lot easier and straightforward than an analog rhythm. And like, that's kind of crazy to say. And that's because we have these sliders, we don't have to be going through menus, all our sounds are automatically there. And something that the rhythm lacks that I really hope that Electron does someday is to make like a set scene page where you don't have to edit any scenes. Maybe that you can have like a scene collection that you could just preload onto every kit and it's not something that you have to think about every single time that you make a kit. Like making a scenes page with different effects. Like I would love to see like an effects option where it's like you're scrolling through the effects options and the scenes are changing. Will we ever see something like that? I don't know, ain't nobody hiring me. Like, they're slacking. Somebody needs to hire Jade so we can like get stuff together. Yo, Ricky Tinez, that's my homeboy. He's doing an awesome job at Electron, but he does have some big shoes to fill. Like, Chank was go. What's your favorite Electron piece? Let me know. Guess what mine is in the comments below, and I'll tell you next time.